Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Political Toadette two thousand six. Um, I am kind of a national politics nerd, and uh, in this video here, I'm gonna go ahead and play New Campaign Trail. Uh, for those who haven't heard of this game, it's basically a presidential election game where you can play an election and you can run for president and see if you win. Um, out of all these types of games um, for these presidential election type games, this one is without a doubt my favorite. And it's because it is so realistic to actual like history and how actual states are. And so it, it kind of adds that challenge to running an actual campaign. Because in some of the in in the other games, like some of the other games, they have like the political machine or like win the White House. They're fun, no doubt, but I find it, you know, I almost find it too easy or too hard to win, considering the map and how it works. In here, this is all about this takes historical knowledge and you know historical results and uses it all, and that's the greatness of this uh, uh, of this game to me. It's a very simple game, but with over hundreds of mods, it's able to be played. Speaking of mods, we're playing one today. Uh, I'm not going to play one of the normal elections. Uh, just you could read these here is where you could go to the mod loader. It's not going to show up because I have a mod loaded, but you could select a mod from the drop down menu. And when you select it, you can click submit and then press click here to begin and open and close the map to make sure the proper questions appear, which I will do. Okay, so in this one, I'm in this video, I'm going to play the 1964 D. This is a alternate three way race in 1964. This is between the Republican Barry Goldwater, the Democrat George Wallace and the progressive Eugene McCarthy. Uh, America has stands unsettled, reckoning with the twin victories of Barry Goldwater and George Wallace just a year after the assassination of Kennedy, while liberals decry the two-party candidates. Barry Goldwater attempts to present himself as a moderate alternative to Wallace while dealing with his conservatism on economics and foreign policy, and his vote on the 1964 Civil Rights Act. George Wallace attempts to win while balancing his positions on segregation and other issues, and Eugene McCarthy hopes to keep liberalism alive against two deeply conservative candidates. Um, so let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, so the first candidate here is Barry Goldwater, of course, home state of Arizona. So he's kind of the granddaddy of the conservative Republican party. Uh, and you know, he was the actual Republican candidate in 1964 against Lyndon B. Johnson and Goldwater got crushed because he was made to be a radical extremist who wanted to blow up the entire world. If you've ever seen the Daisy girl ad, you could just go ahead and look it up. Uh, those were pretty much the tactics used against Goldwater and they kind of worked. Um, he, he's pretty, you know, he, he's, he's an interesting candidate for sure. Um, in this scenario, he's going to start out with the lead, but the thing with him is he of course voted against the civil rights act in 1964. And it's not because he wasn't in support of civil rights. Rather, it was because I believe there was a clause in there that stated about, you know, that would give the government more power, which Goldwater obviously opposed. But it's going to be a damaging attack against him for sure. Um, so we'll go there. Uh, George Wallace, the Democrat, he is home state of Alabama, former governor of that state. He, uh, boy, he's an interesting candidate for sure. He was, uh, you know, he declared segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. Uh he did. He ran actually in 1968 a third party campaign and won five southern states uh, because of his views on segregation. Um, his goal was to deadlock the electoral college between Hubert Humphrey and Richard Nixon. Uh, he failed in that quest, and so he's going to get a bunch of support in the South. But there's not really much we can do about that. Um, okay, and then there's Eugene McCarthy. I will play the, as McCarthy to show how to win with him. Uh, in the progressive party, the home state of Minnesota, uh, I would say out of, out of candidates who have run for the presidency, who were like, who actually had a chance to either get the nomination or win the election, Eugene McCarthy is one of my all time favorites. I think, um, he was very, you know, ahead of his time for civil rights. He was very pro civil rights, um, for the most part. And his opposition to Vietnam, he does vote for the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, but when that kind of spirals out of control with the Gulf of Tonkin incident and whatnot, he basically kind of 
regrets that vote and comes out as anti-war, which made sense. So you start from behind, but if the cards are right, you could deadlock the Electoral College, but that's not good enough. We have to win the election. Um, so we're going to do this. We're going to run as uh, his running mate is going to be George McGovern, who was a Democrat from South Dakota. He was a representative and at this point is now a senator. He's not that well known, but he could help in South Dakota and helps liberals. So that's good for our campaign. Uh, yeah, we're going winner take all, of course. All right. Okay, here we go. Uh, all right, McCarthy McGovern. There we go. So let's explain, I guess, real quick. For those who don't know about how the electoral system in America works, there are 538 electoral votes on the map. Uh, you have to get a majority, which is 270, to win the presidency. Uh, in a three-way race, that's especially a, kind of in a scenario like this, which is very uh, competitive for all three sides, it's it's pretty difficult to get to 270. Um but if you play the cards right, you can do it. Um, as you can see right now, Goldwater, 395. He's way ahead. George Wallace doesn't have a 116 all down here. And I only have 27, which comes from the District of Columbia, Massachusetts, and Minnesota. This is all I got right now. But this will expand a little bit later on. What the best strategy and goal is running this campaign is... Uh, to me, I like to run this campaign on a hexagon strategy because there's a handful of these states that will go my way as long as I don't make any catastrophic mistakes. I'm going to flip a handful of states like New York, Rhode Island, Wisconsin, South Dakota, Oregon, and Washington. I'm going to get those for sure. And then a hexagon strategy to win six of the big electoral prizes, which is California, Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania and New Jersey. I hope to the to flip the script in these states and get an edge in them. Uh, and if I win those six, I could then look to some smaller states, primarily Connecticut, but I could also look towards Vermont, Maine, and Hawaii to potentially give me enough electoral votes to get over the top. Uh, is it going to be hard? Yeah, but uh, I've had to play this uh, scenario a lot, so. Hopefully I can win it here for you guys. Um, and so because, as you can see, we don't really register in the South very well considering our civil rights platform, you primarily want to attack Goldwater here because you're not really going to gain anything if you attack Wallace. There's a couple questions where you kind of have to, which is, which is fine because it helps to get more moderates on your side, like moderate Democrats and whatnot. But you want to go after Goldwater and try to get more moderate and liberal Republicans is the goal. So here we go. Question one of 30. Um, so it is August. And after the nomination of Wallace, you've ready to announce a third party campaign for president under the progressive banner. This was the fourth rendition of the progressive party in the century behind, I believe, Teddy Roosevelt, Robert La Follette and Henry Wallace uh, earlier in the century. Uh, what message do you want to emphasize in your announcement speech? Uh, you have to go hard on civil rights. Civil rights are extremely popular. You want to you want to push this message for the most part in this scenario. It's your best move to appeal. Civil rights is popular, so push it. Uh, so that doesn't do really much, but that's okay. So Goldwater has suggested on several occasions that he was willing to use nuclear weapons in Vietnam, and Wallace has only stopped short of that in his pro-war rhetoric. What will you do? Uh, you should run television advertisements. You want to attack hard against Goldwater here. And they're damaging. Twisting the knife is the right move. So as you can see, we've jumped up to 83. Rhode Island, New York, Washington, all leading our way, which is obviously good and strong. So it's hard in this scenario because you have to play the cards correctly, of course, with these states. But some of these states where it's said at the beginning, I was down by 20 points. I'm down by 13 in Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Uh, Michigan is the most likely of the kind of hexagon that will go for me. So I, as long as I play well, I don't really worry as much about Michigan as I do about some of the other states. California's 12 points. Illinois is 8. I don't really, Michigan and Illinois are my two best, so it's really the other four I have to focus on. We will start in the Buckeye State. All right. After Wallace won the Democratic nomination, many liberals walked out of the convention. Protests outside one way or another turned into a riot. Sadly, this was common in the 60s, considering all of the changes going on. Wallace blames the liberals, while the liberals believe that it was the fault of the police. What do you think about all this? So it's good to go after Wallace in this type of situation, I've found, because 
this answer, this was a police riot, plain and simple, is is kind of too out there. Uh, you don't also want to go kind of the peace route here. You want to attack Wallace for this. It might not be a bad idea to tie the riots and disorder to Wallace instead of letting him win the narrative on it. For sure there. All right. Why did you pick George McGovern as your running mate? Well, we only have one answer here, but he has served South Dakota well, and he will be a great vice president. And we are up to 99. So slowly we are now, we've gotten almost every state at the beginning that I kind of mentioned you would get for sure if you played the cards right, because now Wisconsin's leading our way and South Dakota. They're a little close now, but they're going to jump up later. Oregon's the other one. We'll wait on that. Uh, let's see. We'll go back to Ohio. All right. The image of President Johnson is currently a fairly unpopular one due to his working with Bobby Baker and Bill Sol Estes, shown by the outcome of the Democratic Convention. But his approvals have been slowly improving after your nomination. How do you want to deal with Johnson on the campaign trail? So Lyndon Johnson at this time, because he's not popular in this scenario, you can't really go all about him. Um, you could try and go against him specifically for the corruption. So it, it almost makes sense to go with the safe answer, which is talk about his popular achievements, which goes to civil rights or social security and some of the programs he initiated. So I will go this route. It keeps supporters happy without losing those that don't like him, but neither. So it's kind of just kind of a neutral answer that doesn't really do a whole lot. But that did give me Oregon now. Oh, South Dakota went slightly against me, but eh, that's okay. We'll get that. All right, Barry Goldwater voted against the 1964 Civil Rights Act, although he voted in favor of other civil rights bills. Where do you stand on civil rights, particularly on the recently passed law? All right. So obviously, we need to come full support here. And I believe, let's see. So we're for civil rights, but let's avoid winning over Wallace voters. We're not really going to win those. Um, we are going to go with the pro support. It's a mainstream stance, and we're good on that front. Uh, it, it'll kind of rotate with some of these other states, but we'll continue uh, doing what we got to do. We'll go to Pennsylvania this time. All right, which strategy do you prefer, attacking the candidacy of Wallace and appealing to his voters or focusing on attacking Goldwater and winning over those considering voting for him? Um, we are going to go for Goldwater. He is the one ahead. We have to go after him. That is our, that's our only way to win here. All right, there's been a lot of talk from Goldwater's camp about cutting spending, with him suggesting cuts to a variety of programs. What do you think about this? So we have to attack Goldwater here again. Um... We obviously can't support cuts. We don't want to do this stance right here. We can't. We could support the Democrats and say it is a, uh, it's attack, uh, a way to distract from the economic growth. Because remember, Eugene McCarthy, although he's running as the Progressive Party candidate in air quotes, he is a Democrat. He's just running as you know the Progressive Liberal Democrat that he is because the other two candidates are just a little too conservative, um, at least in his eyes and a lot of moderate's eyes. So we could also go after farm subsidies. We obviously aren't going to do either of these two. It's one of these two. Uh, I kind of go back and forth. This time I'm going to go with this answer to talk about the strength of this. And this is a good answer for liberals and others to rally. So that was, that's, yeah. All right, Michigan's one point, which is good. Ohio is still a little far away. Oh, not West Virginia. Ohio. Is there any issue in particular that you would like to attack Goldwater on at the start of this campaign? So we want to attack Goldwater, and we're going... We could attack him on this or Social Security. I've kind of gone with both. I'm going to go with the Social Security issue because people really like it at this time. So it helps to attack. What do we? Uh, what do you have to say about Wallace's running mate, North Carolina Senator Sam Irvin? Um, we are not going to attack. We're we're going to focus on Goldwater's campaign. We're not going to we're not going to win anything in the South. There's no point in trying to go after it. Is what I've learned. All right, back to Ohio we go. Goldwater has promoted Social Security reform, claiming that he wants to reform it into a voluntary system. Do you want to attack him on this? Of course we have to. Uh, you could focus on civil rights, which isn't a bad strategy considering how popular they are, but Goldwater, but social security is popular. So you need to attack him, but we could go balance with other things, but let's actually, we're going to go here with that. We have him on tape. Yes, we do have the video and it's hurting them in the polls. 
Okay, what do you have to say about Goldwater's running mate? New York Representative William E. Miller. And so since we are attacking the Republicans, we of course are going to attack Miller. Uh, it doesn't entirely help, but we can't be passive either, so. This time we're going to go to Pennsylvania. Would you appoint federal judges who support the decision Engel versus Vital outlawing mandatory school prayer? Of course, the First Amendment, freedom of religion, this was somewhat controversial at this time. So we are going to say that it is a First Amendment issue, in my opinion. Um, didn't really change much. Is there a particular area that you want to focus on now relatively early in the campaign? So I wish it gave me other options. So California's a nine point spread. Nine. Right, we're going to, we will go to the West Coast and go there. Okay. We will campaign now. All right. California's within four, which is good. New Jersey, we need to go to. The assassination of President Kennedy less than a year ago still hangs heavy over the American conscience. Um, how do you want to address the legacy of Kennedy as your campaign? We embrace as much as possible. Kennedy was popular, and we need to embrace this. Okay. All right. Okay, so some have raised the possibility of another presidential debate, like the one in 1960. But Wallace has stated that he would only participate if you were there, while Goldwater has implied that is too far for him. What will you do? So this is one of those questions that's completely luck-based. You can see, I am totally willing to participate in a debate with the two other two candidates, and I hope Goldwater gets on board. The important thing with this one, there's a one in three chance you either get the good answer, the bad answer, or the kind of neutral in the middle answer. Being that we're behind, we have to debate here. We don't really have a choice. And so I'm going to go with the third option. Goldwater caves and attends the debate, but he was definitely off his game. You and Wallace managed to hammer him on several gaffes. So the debate is helpful to us, which is good. We need, we need help in the debate for sure. Ohio, we got to go to. All right, if elected as president, what would you do to lower the inflation rate in this country, which currently stands at over 4%? It's, it's crazy to think, considering where inflation, uh, the, all the talk about inflation in the last couple of years, at 4%, this was, a, this was somewhat of a big deal that it was that high um, in the 1960s. It would only get higher in the 70s. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and um, I, I would say in this is issue, we are going to um, Republicans are grasping at straws. We attack the Republicans still because their views are wrong. Um, so what is Wallace at? Wallace is at 133. Wallace is ahead in Maryland at the moment. Okay. All right. Part of your problem is your lack of name recognition with the general public. It's definitely improved, but it could be even better. What will you do to really get your name out there in this campaign? And so what to do is advertising. Get your name around with advertising. Of course, as the 60s are going around, TV is starting to play a role with television, and it plays a role in helping our campaign. All right, Pennsylvania, here we go. In August, the Gulf of Tonkin resolution was passed through Congress authorizing President Johnson to deploy conventional military force in Southeast Asia. How do you feel about this? So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, McCarthy did vote for this. He actually did. But as the war in Vietnam kind of escalated, he kind of, he basically kind of was like, I regret voting for this because Johnson has let us down a disastrous war. And so, um... I would say here that may it, it, this is one of those this is a tough one because it's so hard in this one this this is one of those questions that just isn't very good like you don't really get a good answer out of this because you could take the passive answer but you could we could go aggressive here I'm actually going to try this yes it's the popular mainstream position and, and though my supporters might be a little disappointed, they're not voting for Goldwater or Wallace, though, especially the liberals in my camp. Okay, many prominent liberal Democrats, including Senator Hubert Humphrey, Robert F. Kennedy, and most importantly, President Johnson, have endorsed you. How will you handle this? Uh, these endorsements? So you, highlight, uh, you will highlight Kennedy and Humphrey for sure. Don't mention Johnson too often because Johnson just isn't popular enough right now. 
All right. Ohio is within four. Pennsylvania, four. New Jersey, five. California, one. Let's go to New Jersey. All right. Unions have typically endorsed Democrats, uh, but Wallace is, is a different case due to his racism and his lack of significant support of unions through his career. However, there's still some seemingly there's still some seemingly being driven towards endorsing Wallace. What will you do to prevent this? Uh, yeah, unions for a long time have always, for the most part, been very supportive of Democrats. Typically, um, I, I, you know, obviously Wallace's racism hurts, but as well as being the governor of Alabama, where kind of in the South union culture at this time really wasn't that existent for the most part. It just wasn't a very popular thing down there. It was way more popular in the Midwest, uh, and the Northeast, um, for sure. So we'll talk about Taft-Hartley. Uh, we want to repeal that. I will be the strongest supporter for labor unions. Wallace never supported them. That is how that one goes. All right. Okay. Famous actor Ronald Reagan. Yes, he was an actor. If you've seen Back to the Future, I'm sure you know about that. But Reagan uh, has given a long speech in support of Goldwater in California. The speech, immediately popular nationwide, has been dubbed a time for choosing. Uh, this is true. Ronald Reagan was a big campaigner for Barry Goldwater. He uh, And when Goldwater kind of failed, Ronald Reagan kind of became the face of the conservative wing of the Republican Party. It was enough of a wave to get him two terms in the White House, too. Uh, don't fall for a speech by a movie star. Well, so that uh, that actually kind of helped me a little bit, which is rare. That answer usually hurts me. Um, okay, well, Connecticut is slightly in our favor, which is good. Okay, New Jersey still with five, Ohio four, Pennsylvania three, California's three. We'll go back to Ohio. Moderate Republicans like Nelson Rockefeller originally refused to endorse Goldwater, but with the nomination of Wallace, it seemed like they could have gotten behind him. The Rise of Your campaign definitely blunted any of the momentum towards him, uh, that him being Goldwater, but it's unclear if they'll endorse you or if they just will make no statements. So what will you do to get these endorsements? And so we are going to play a civil rights role here. I'll tell them this. The election only has three options. Two of them want to roll back our progress on civil rights. One of them wants to do war make your pick. And so prominent Republicans have now endorsed me. Now we're at 160. Illinois now has ever so slightly gone in my favor. All right. At a rally for Wallace in Maryland, a large number of counter protesters, most of whom supported you, confronted the Wallace supporters in what quickly turned into another riot. Several counter protesters were sent to the hospital with serious injuries and one was nearly killed. Additionally, many Wallace supporters were hurt as well. What do you think about this? So to be attack Wallace, you have to attack him here in this situation. You can't let him take the high ground on you. Take the attack is a good move. Now, it, it, it doesn't entirely help me, but it's, you know, could be worse. So we'll go back to Ohio. All right. Nikita Khrushchev, premier of the Soviet Union, has been overthrown by Leonid Brezhnev with Goldwater and Wallace using belligerent quotes from Khrushchev to gather votes from foreign policy minded voters. This might help you. Yeah, so uh, Khrushchev, I believe, took over in 1953 after Joseph Stalin died. Um, and he he literally got overthrown by his own party. It's kind of like what the Italians did to Benito Mussolini in World War II. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think it was 64, 65 when Khrushchev got voted out. He was around when Eisenhower and Kennedy were presidents, uh, primarily. Uh, we'll take what we can get for help. And so now... We are now at 237 because Ohio is now in my column and California is ever so slightly, but Pennsylvania and New Jersey continue to be ever so slightly stingy. Vermont and Maine are also slightly in my column. All right, as the campaign enters its last stretch, what theme do you want to focus on while rallying around the country? We will, uh, in this, we will continue civil rights. Civil rights continues to be very popular. We will continue to campaign on that. And we are now at 283. This is going oh so far. I, I don't want to jinx anything, but this is going about as well as it could at this moment. Now, at this point, we have to play defense where we're in front or behind. We're going to Pennsylvania. Reports are early at the moment, but we're getting information that your opponent, George Wallace, was just shot at in a rally in Indiana. We don't have much information about the attacker or Wallace's health, but many Wallace supporters are claiming that he was a radical leftist of some sort. What will you do? So... George Wallace did get shot in 1972 when he was running for president uh, for the Democratic nomination. Uh, it led him to be paralyzed in the bottom half of his body. Um, 
I, I, I'm not entirely sure if he actually did get shot in 19, in the 1960s. Um, but regardless here, we, we must not have violence. Even if they disagree, we will strongly condemn. So Wallace's polls go up and you can see now he's now at 177. Uh, this, oh goodness. Something, something bad just happened. Ohio went against us. That's not good. California. Wait, Ohio's got. Ah, Maine. Okay, that's what that was. All right, after what happened to Wallace, the election closes in on chaos. Wallace is after a day once again on the trail, railing about how liberals who want to destroy America as we know it, as semi-violent pro-Wallace marches and counter-protests occur around the country. The worst part is, Wallace's rhetoric doesn't seem to be hurting him in the polls. What will you do? So, um, so Wallace will not condemn. There's no way. So, condemn the marches by Wallace supporters. He's a racist, plain and simple. End of story. All right, 257. Goodness gracious. Maine went back to my direction, but Ohio is the closest one. We got to go here. Is there a candidate who you'd prefer to focus on attacking now that we're at the end of the campaign? Simple. We're going to attack Goldwater. Let's focus on him. All right, now we're at 283. Hopefully it's enough. As the chaotic election comes into its last day, where do we want to campaign? On f we will go to Ohio because I think Pennsylvania, oh, New Jersey's right there too, but I can't campaign, campaign here in New Jersey. So we're going Ohio. Okay, so, oh man, this is going to be close. I don't know if I'm going to win this or not. Hopefully I do. Um, it's all about the hexagon. I'm going to get a couple of the smaller states too. So it's all about the hexagon of states at the beginning. California, Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. I could just click go to final result, but to me, that's kind of boring. I like to see the states come in. It's kind of almost like regular election night. It's most of the South for Wallace, of course, as expected. Um, it's kind of just how it goes. Um, I got Vermont. Cool. All right. Most of Wallace's states are already in. He might get a couple more. Got Ohio. Yes. Wisconsin, South Dakota. Got Michigan, so it's Pennsylvania, New Jersey, because I, uh, California, I don't know. Oh, boy. This is, this is stressful. We got Pennsylvania and New Jersey. If we get California, we win the election, I think, because we're going to get Washington, Oregon, and Hawaii. So if we get California, I win. Got Washington, for sure, now. Wallace might win New Mexico, but it might go to Goldwater. Doesn't matter, though. Okay, let's see. It's taking its sweet time. I won! Yeah! You won this year's election. Good! So, wow, alright. So, this is... Okay, so, the first time I won with this, I got the 283, but New Mexico went to Wallace instead of Goldwater. Alright, desegregation now, desegregation tomorrow, and desegregation forever. You have won the 1964 election. Even with the nomination of Wallace and Goldwater, most pundits didn't think you could win the election outright, but you sure proved them wrong. It seems liberalism still has life in it, huh? What you do from here is up to you. Democrats probably still have Congress, and there could be a majority in Congress for many liberal priorities. If the economy keeps going well, there's no reason that you can't run for re-election in four years. For now, though, be happy at what you've accomplished here and how you've saved America from these two candidates. God, man, this scenario is a lot of fun. Uh, look at how close the popular vote was. It was less than... It was 113,000 votes between myself and Goldwater. Even though Goldwater finished with only 78 electoral votes, he was more prevalent in the states I was competitive in than Wallace. So, so there you go. That's so that's how uh, to win as uh, Eugene McCarthy. Uh, the best strategy that I was able to come up with to win. Um, if you have better strategies, though, uh, feel free to tell me. If you like this video, you can leave a like and subscribe. Uh, I'll play this game and some more. Uh, elections like this one, I'll have more coverage and whatnot uploaded uh, as we start as I've just started this channel and trying to get it slowly off the ground. All right, I thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye everybody.